Mr. Salve, what do you make of this argument that uh, Justice Lalit has presented? It's really about assessing the merit and those who have been in the system can do so best. I've been a trenchant critic of the collegium system and I continue to be so. And the current workings, including the public's controversies which have surfaced, have uh, established that the system is not working as it should. And I've been a critic for various reasons. The Supreme Court in 1991 was driven to construe provisions of the Constitution which had worked well for the first three decades plus of the Constitution, where the executive appointed judges in perfect harmony. And let's remind ourselves, some of the finest stellar members of the Indian judiciary came from that process, the Krishnayars, the Bhagavatis, the Tulsapurkars, the Chandrachub, Senior, they all came from that system. Judges who held basic structure reigns in the government came from that system. Subarao came from that system. So we have had some stalwarts who came from that system. That, was not, that system fell into disrepair when the executive started exceeding its brief and breached the protocols. In 1991, Supreme Court was driven then to holding that uh, consultation means concurrence. Now, in no language does consultation mean concurrence, but the Supreme Court was driven to hold that. That was a fix for that moment. What followed post-91 showed that all was not well in this system. No judiciary in the world appoints itself. It's unheard of. To suggest that, and, and the NJAC judgment is deeply flawed in my opinion. That's my view. To say that to preserve the independence of the judiciary, it's only the judges who must appoint judges, would suggest that the American Supreme Court, would suggest that the UK Supreme Court, would suggest that the Canadian Supreme Court, would suggest that the Council of the ETA in France, etc., are all not independent, which is wrong. Or is it an indictment of the Indian character and a wholesale sense of uh, disapproval or a, or, or a vote of no confidence in the working of the wings of the Constitution to say judges and judges alone must appoint judges. I agree entirely with Justice Lalit that the critical input on the assessment of talents of a person can come from the judiciary. But it's quite another matter to say that the judges must be the sole arbiter of who is to be appointed. It's, it's, it's flawed on principle and it's flawed on policy. And thirdly, people like me have always maintained that the Supreme Court is ill-equipped to deal with the kind of controversies which arise in the appointment of judges and in the transfer of judges. And we have seen that happening. The judiciary is an institution which must only be required to speak through its judgments. And that's what they do. That's what our judges do. They deal with the most delicate cases, the most difficult cases, and they speak boldly through their judgments. And that's what they do. And that's why we say you may criticize their judgments. Don't criticize the judge. Criticize his judgment if you don't like it. That's how the judicial function works. When the judges get involved in things like appointment of judges, and then there are publicly aired differences of how people were appointed or how people were transferred, it definitely lowers the esteem of the court in the public eye. So speaking for myself, for various, and, and this, is a, this is a matter for a full day debate, not for 15 minutes. I, I have been a trenchant critic of this form of appointment. If you don't agree with the way the NGAC was constituted, maybe we could have engineered it into a better body, into a more representative body. But to say people of India, the, the eminent citizens of India, to say the political executive should have absolutely no say in the appointment of judges in an institutional process is something with which I don't agree. So, Justice.